three, three tips to help you when you are an upper elementary school teacher or community, a middle school community or a high school community, and you've got kids who are not meeting the benchmark and you ask, what are you going to do? I've got three tips for you tonight. Are you ready? So number one, okay, let's, let me show you what I mean for number one. Um, when your kids are struggling uh, and you've got third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade kids who are behind in reading, it's time to do something drastic. This is number one point. Do something drastic, okay? The run-of-the-mill day-to-day curriculum, the same old curriculum is not going to work. It's not been working and it won't work. We have to do something different. Just stop doing that, okay? The status quo, the way it's always been done, doing social studies for like a sixth grade teacher and doing science and math and 45 minutes of English language arts, stop doing that. It's not working. We have to turn the tables on um, the plans that these kids are getting. If there's a huge gap, we have to stop everything and solve the problem now because the this reading issue is their number one priority above all other things outside in, in school. They can't learn the science if they don't know how to read. They can't learn the English. They can't learn the, the social studies. They can't even feel good about themselves and they'll probably be a behavior problem because the, this gap. So everything um, pivots on us stopping the status quo, stopping the way things always have been. We can't just tinker with this problem. Okay, so stop doing that. If you are trying to, in a school where you've, got, you've identified these kids have a problem and you want to give them to a teaching assistant with very little training and give them to her 20 minutes, three times a week, and you think it's going to get solved, uh -uh. it ain't going to happen. It is something that uh, just has to be intensely provided for. So number one is don't do things the way it's always been done. Just stop. Okay change things up. Okay. Number two, um, reading research has proven this over and over again. We have to provide, um, reading interventions for the kids who are behind that's of sufficient, um, intensity and duration. It's got to be, um, every day and for many weeks, and it can't just be for five minutes or 10 minutes. It's got to be maybe 20, 30, 40. Some reading interventions are 60 minutes. Um, a lot of the research where, where kids have been transformed from being, say, at the second percentile to being average readers, it's through reading interventions where they get 70 hours of reading intervention. So that is a lot. But if you weren't a reader and you were at the second percentile and you moved to being average, would it be worth it that you went through 70 hours? Could the school life of uh, the leaders and the teachers be easier if everybody was not at the second percentile and was more like average? You betcha. <laughs> and here at Reading Simplified, I typically find that we can move kids, even who are really struggling, a lot faster than that, but it still does take intensity. My typical um, rate on average is 12 hours to get a struggling reader at grade level or slightly above. And that's with 12 hours with the tutor with me and then some time reading with a parent. So in a classroom dynamic, it may take longer, um, but it still doesn't, uh, it still is number one, it's possible. And number two, um, it, ha and it can happen with a sufficient intensity and duration. So that's my point number two. Uh, we have to increase the intensity and the duration, longer um, time and more times the week and for many more weeks, okay? So the third point, all of those things will not really make a difference if you don't choose the research-based interventions. If you're not doing something that's going to change what's really at the root of the problem. And by and large, if a kid is behind in fifth grade or seventh grade or ninth grade, most of the time in reading, it's, they're behind because they can't decode well they don't recognize they don't recognize words fast enough so they're not fluent and so then comprehension breaks down so you see a host of problems no doubt but the foundation we talk about this all the time here at reading simplify is that they have a broken sound symbol decoding system that's like a sieve for them it's got part it's partially working 
but not strong. And so we need to shore up that foundation. So are you picking an intervention where the activities are research-based that build on that sound-based decoding um, foundation? So right here, the foundation of this triangle is sound-based decoding. That's what I was just saying. Once a kid has a strong sound-based decoding foundation, then they start to memorize words more readily. And when they start to memorize the words more readily, more accurately, then they become fluent. And when they're fluent, then they can comprehend more easily because they're not putting so much mental resources into just cracking the code and reading fluently. Now, that is a simplification because those di those those arrows, they, sh they, they prove the point or they suggest that everything is bidirectional, that one thing can influence the other. But notice the foundation is bigger and it's more important. I have been sharing with people for the last few weeks and months about how just three activities can make a big difference in changing that foundation for whenever it's cracked, whether the child is 10 or 15 or five, if the foundation is shaky, you can solve it pretty quickly with mainly just three activities. And if you haven't heard about it, please give it a try. Check this out. Here is the link. This is a, um, a free event. It's just learning about how three activities shore up that sound-based foundation, and it'll make such a powerful difference for your kids. So it's based on research, the kinds of things that, that you read about in here, where um, phonemic awareness and phonics knowledge is integrated from the get-go, uh, it's efficient, and kids build up that foundation. And then we also emphasize how they're gonna read real words simultaneously, so they learn to recognize words as well. So um, jump into that link right there, reasonableified.com forward slash event, and you can get the keys to building up that strong sound symbol foundation. And so what I'm recommending is three parts. We gotta just stop what we're doing we can't do the same old, same old, right? And we might need to have radical changes to our schedule, radical changes to our curricula, and solve that problem immediately. It's more important than anything else in school. If our kids are behind, we've got to stop everything and solve that problem. And number, relatedly, it is doable, okay? It's not an impossibility. Um, if we choose insufficient intensity and duration, number two, and we pick activities that are research-based that know, we know will move the needle rapidly. So look for things that are going to move the needle rapidly. And I can't, I've, I've searched for 20 years on things that move the needle rapidly, and that's kind of what's formed the basis of Read Simplify. And the core of it are just three activities that I'm going to share with you in that workshop if you want to join me. So they're called Switch It, Read It, and Sort It. And we teach you how they um, shore up that foundation, the, the sound-based decoding foundation that I was talking about.